Community. I'm here with Roland Campbell, a Hello. copper knight who's doing really well with his series, Hardy Boys. The second season is just about to launch. Uh, great to see you after all these years. Yeah, good to see you, man. I'm so happy to be here chatting to you. Awesome. So, hey, um, before we get into the Hardy Boys, because I really want to get into that, but Mm -hmm. you know, let's talk a bit about Cochrane and the time you spent here, maybe a story or two about what you remember best about Cochrane. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I grew up in Cochrane, I guess, until I was like 16. And uh, I guess our connection is I was, I was close friends with your son um, and, and our, our group of, uh, I don't know what we were, wanderers, uh, <laughs> our group of friends. Um, Man, I wouldn't like that. That was the best childhood ever. I don't think I'd want to grow up anywhere else. I just remember just just walking for hours, building forts, uh, close to Camor, spontaneous mountain trips every weekend. Uh, I, I, I miss it so much. Uh, swimming in the in the Bow River, um, going up to the rodeo grounds, hanging out in the in the woods. Uh, I wouldn't trade that for the world, man. I, I miss it there a lot. I, I'd be happy to go back. But still, you've you've you're building a huge career, and you know, good on you. Uh, you know, how did you come about getting the role of Frank and Hardy Boys? Um, so Frank was an interesting one. Um, the showrunner, creator, producer of uh, Hardy Boys was doing a deal with my acting agent, uh, and he was saying we're having a really hard time finding this Frank guy. Uh, and they sent in a couple of clips that I had done from another show, um, and then I took a I took a call with Jason. And uh, we got along like immediately, like crazy. Um, and it just sort of happened that way. So it was the only thing I think I've ever done where I haven't auditioned for is like something that that is this big um, was like the first time I've never had to audition. It was just sort of like this meeting of, of, of minds in a way. And, and we just connected a lot. So it happened that way. Cool. And, and the, the character itself, though, Frank, um, did you have any background in the Hardy Boys? Had you ever read any of the books? Or? Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, uh, Camor cabin books. That's what they were to me. <laughs> like, you know, like you go to a friend's cabin in Camor somewhere in Alberta or whatever. They were always on the shelf. Like if you don't have Internet, you'd read a You'd read a cabin book <laughs> like a, like the Hardy Boys books were, were a part of my childhood for sure. Cool. And, you know, like, uh, what did you draw upon to, you know, to build the character Frank for for this series? Yeah, I mean, I try to like these books started, you know, 1921, I think there's some people. So there's one. I think there's like a, a, a there's one book written. It was like 1916 or something, but it goes it goes way back. Um, and uh, I, I tried to pull like from the 1950s books. Cause we're doing the show in the eighties, but I just, I wanted this sort of like all American, like, you know, for like the, the older generation that, that read the books and those books specifically, I, I kind of wanted to have that feel to it. So pulled a lot from the older books. You know, it's meant, it, it's great. You mentioned the eighties. Cause I was thinking about that. You know, um, I think it's ingenious to do this series in the eighties when uh, you have to use a lot of new ingenuity to actually do detective work right exactly yeah i mean if you said it nowadays it'd just be two boys on their phones googling how to figure stuff out it'd be like the worst tv show ever yeah so we uh i thought the 80s was great and not only that but man like the music in the 80s rocks uh costumes are fun um and and yeah it, just smart to put a detective series in in, in the 80s that way you don't uh, there's enough technology that they can get themselves into trouble but uh, not too much if the show ends after 10 minutes <laughs> yeah you know uh, it's kind of cool to um you know i'm, I'm kind of curious uh, so i mean that was before you were born did you have any trouble getting into the 80s although a lot of like i know my kid seems to know a lot about the 80s yeah. than i do <laughs> apparently <laughs> that's because it was me me and luke man and colton and dan we don't they grew up on the old music it was uh uh, I mean, I, I don't think you ever met my dad, but he was a he was a, a rock drummer, a punk rock drummer in Bristol in the 80s. Um, so he I grew up on all his records and his, you know, subculture of Bristol punk rock. And um, that's definitely not what this show is. But I, I, I think like knowing the music, knowing the, you know, sort of fantasizing about that age, it was cool to like go play a 16 year old in, in that day and age. 
Yeah, it was kind of fun when I, I think uh, in the last episode, there's like a Thomas Dol- Dolby song, uh, She Blinded Me With Science, you know, and it just kind of brought back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, exactly. For me, it's like the synthesizer, like even on the season two trailer, it's like all the synth is like, I love it so much. Oh, that's so cool. Um, you seem to have a connection with Alexander Elliott. You know, what is, is was there instant chemistry between the two of you? Yeah, I, th- I think so. Uh, I mean, it's a funny thing when you make movies or you do TV shows is uh, when, you, when you meet your co-stars or your, your crew or your director, you've got about at most five days to get to know them as intimately as possible. Um, so you kind of, it's like a meeting of like, you kind of drop all your walls and, you know, share yourself fully with somebody. And we just got along immediately. Like we, we, we understand each other really well. And he really does feel like my little brother. And uh, we try to annoy each other as much as possible uh, just to, just to get that brotherly connection going, you know, (laughs) (laughs) try to make each other laugh in the middle of takes. It's, it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. I I could see that too. I bet. (laughs) Um, so I mean, takes you have to take with you, get it going, eh? Oh man, when I when we're laughing, it's a problem. I mean, they'll just roll camera until we're done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we should get into Hardy Boys season two premieres April sixth. I hear we have a bit of a tour on the go right now, building up momentum to the season opener, right? Yeah, that's right, man. We're just uh, I'm just in Los Angeles right now, um, and then we're headed over to Anaheim this weekend. We're gonna do uh, WonderCon. Um, we're gonna do a screening uh, over there. Uh, and a panel, a little bit of a Q and A, which I'm very excited for. Right, and uh, actually, I think all ten see all there's ten episodes this coming season. That's right. Yeah, so all ten drop on Hulu, and then uh, in Canada on YTV and Stack TV, it drops weekly, which is my favorite way to watch a TV show because that way you can't binge through it too fast, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, you know you're right. Even the stuff that's bingeable, I don't. I, I yeah, like yeah, exactly. enjoying it. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. But can you give us a bit of a hint of what we're going to see in season two? Yeah, so season two picks up six months after uh, season one. Uh, Frank is living a normal life. He's uh, back to being a teenager, recovering uh, from all the trauma of season one. Happily, you know, with his girlfriend, living a normal high school life. And uh, somebody, one of the classmates at school goes missing. Um, and he does everything in his power to avoid getting involved in that. But his little brother, Joe, does everything possible to get involved in it. Uh, and uh, Frank also has another thing going on, which adds some supernatural to the show, uh, which I can't talk about. But it is an insane adventure through season two. And the way it ends is like I just watched the season finale a couple of days ago. And I, I'm like, it's the show. I know the show and I know how it ends. And I watched it and I was like wow, that's crazy. Like it's, uh, there's, there's some, there's a little added thing to this season. That's just, it's really, really spicy. So, um, it, it, it's great. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it. it sure. It's also like this season's a lot more of an ensemble thing. Like you get to know the other characters really well and it feels like a bit of a gang adventure. Uh, and the, the humor is way up when, when you put five kids in a room, man, and some improv, it's, there's some good jokes in this season. Well, that's what I was curious about, because, I mean, you, there was a real good core there of friends established in that first season, right? They're all back, or most of them? Yeah, they're all back and some added characters, just to just to add some 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 more to the show. Uh, there's a couple new characters, uh, Sadie uh, and uh, Krista are joining us this season, um, and I can't talk about what they're doing, but uh, they're amazing in the show, and it, it adds a lot to it. Uh, and I, I'm hoping it'll add even more to the, you know – this show for me is like something really great for families to watch. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, it brings even more people to the table to watch it as a family. Awesome. Well, hey, I won't take any more of your time, but I'm really looking forward to the premiere. Uh, I hope you have a great week and congratulations on your career so far. I really enjoyed watching, you know, how it's gone over all these years. So, uh, <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, man. I, I'm, I'm happy to talk whenever, man. I, I appreciate you uh, letting me come on here. Um, and, uh, hopefully I see you soon. I'm going to try and come down to Cochrane, uh, this summer. So cool. I'll come well, knock on your door. You should. It's downhill from Cot. So. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Sweet, man. Perfect. All right. Tell Luke I say hi as well. Okay. You take care, bud. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks Thank again. You.